Good morning, ghouls and ghosties, and welcome to week five of Vlogoween, the final part of Vlogoween. I cannot believe it, but this is the final weekend in October right now, and I literally can't believe it. It is crazy that we're already here. It is under a week until Halloween. So Halloween is next Thursday. In other words, it's going to be the last day of this Vlogoween. And you guys are actually probably seeing this on November 1st. So for you, I hope you have the most amazing, fantastic, spooky, ooky, and kooky Halloween ever. It makes me so, so sad that this season has already come to an end, but I think we had a blast together. I think we did all kinds of new things this year that we'd never done before together. We had so much success haunt hunting. I had so much fun with talker treats and with vlogoween, though you're still watching the final one. So far, it has been fantastic. So I have just had such a blast with you guys. It's been another amazing season with my ghouls and ghosties, and I already can't wait for next year. And don't worry, I'm not completely disappearing. I would love to continue doing at least some videos throughout the different seasons. If you guys ever have any ideas or anything, please let me know. I would like to do another spooky kind of Xmas decorating, spooky holiday decorating at some point coming up in the next two months. And I'd love to do some other kind of like integrating spookiness into other holidays coming up. So again, if you have any ideas or anything you specifically want to see from me, more cooking, baking, more collections that I have of certain things, other holiday decorating, please let me know. But anyways, we need to get into this week that you are with me on right now. So today is Friday for me. And it is the 25th right now of October. This weekend, of course, being the weekend before Halloween, is full of all kinds of ooky spooky kookiness. But not really going to a bunch of events. More like the at home, enjoying the ooky spooky kookiness in the house. And preparing for the big day that we've been preparing for all year. So coming up tonight, we are going to our local brewery, the one that I helped put up the spider web and helped decorate and take the skeleton pictures for. They are having just a little like Halloween beer festivity candy pairing situation and all of the employees are going to be in costumes. So they're going to be cereal mascots. And so I'm going to go as a cereal killer and I'm gonna have a knife through a cereal box and I'm gonna wear a like bloody shirt. My mom and I and my aunt and uncle possibly are going there tonight because Ryan is actually at a concert or he's gonna be at a concert. And then later my mom for sure and possibly my brother are coming over to my place to either watch a Halloween movie or maybe play some Mario Party. I don't really know what we're doing but we just thought since Ryan's gonna be out pretty late instead of me just sitting at home alone doing nothing I was like hey wanna just like watch a movie or hang out. So that's what we're doing. Tomorrow, we are going to be making the trick-or-treater treat bags. I am so excited. So our new tradition, because of course this is only the second year doing it, is we watch Halloween Town 1 and we have some wine and we put together all of the trick-or-treater bags with all of the different stuff we have, which is a lot. We have like temporary tattoos, glow sticks, vampire fangs, spider rings, bubbles, all different kinds of candy, just like tons of different stuff. So that is going to be tomorrow and that is a whole job in itself. And then Sunday, we get to carve the jack-o'-lanterns. So I wanted to hold them off so of course they'd stay like fresh and not mold. So we're doing that on Sunday. Super excited. I don't have ideas yet for what to carve as faces, but I should take some inspiration from the jack-o'-lantern spectacular. There were some fun ones there, but I don't know. We'll see when we get to that point. Otherwise, coming up this week, I actually have quite a bit of stuff going on. Shocker. So it's Ryan and I's first anniversary. Our first wedding anniversary is Monday. I'm sure we'll do something. He took the day off and I know we're at least going to like a dinner of some kind but I don't really know what else we're doing and then on Tuesday my mom has a work anniversary dinner event so I have that coming up and then Wednesday might be my only day where I don't actually have anything specific going on but it is Halloween Eve so there's gonna be something I guarantee and then Thursday's Halloween which I am so torn on. I'm so excited, but I'm so sad and nervous and I'm already in mourning. Anyways, I'm just gonna try to enjoy this week as it comes and not get too like sad about it until after. We'll just worry about being sad after. And as a reminder, I was thinking maybe on November 1st, the morning of and day of, possibly trying to do some like clearance 
spooky shopping, like a haunt hunt clearance version, maybe. We'll see. That's what the week looks like. I'm gonna head over to my mom's house now. Of course, it's like every Friday, it's a gym day. Let's take a look at her tree and I'll give you a tree color update. So let's start the day, shall we, ghouls and ghosties? Here is our Friday update of the fall colors in my mom's front yard. We are peak color, I'd say, on this tree. Even though actually a lot of trees around us have already been losing leaves, but this one is definitely at peak and it is gorgeous. It's also gonna be a lot to rake up when it falls. <laughs> it's already a lot. Good morning, ghouls and ghosties, and welcome to Saturday. It is currently the 26th, I believe, of October. I've got my skeleton ribcage sweater on, and I am headed to a restaurant to once again meet some family members for once again another birthday. If you can't tell, there's a lot of birthdays in my family, like right in a row. There was my brothers, and the next day was my grandma's, and the next day was one of my cousins, and then today is my uncle's, and then in two days is our wedding anniversary, the next day is my mom's work anniversary, and the next day is my parents' wedding anniversary, so there's a lot. There's a lot that happens in this part of October. And then there were even some other birthdays and stuff that were earlier in the month, but there is a lot that happens in the end of October around this time for my family. So I am headed to have lunch with my grandparents and my mom and my aunt and uncle. And I don't know if anyone else is going, but at least them. Ryan would come with, but he has a friend who's visiting who went to the concert with him last night. So she's still over. So they are gonna, I don't know what they're gonna do. I think they're maybe gonna like antique shop and they'll probably go to their own little lunch situation. So they are having a blast. She's super freaking nice. She's like his friend who is also into the spooky season in Halloween. So we are just like chit-chatting about spooky shopping and I had a bunch of stuff that I had found at Home Goods for her that she had wanted. But anyways, that is what I have going on thus far. I have a couple errands to do after. Like I need to go to Target and grab a couple things, but I also need to go to Home Depot and grab something. I have some errands and we're gonna do those after. So it actually works out perfect that I am doing this alone, driving alone without Ryan, because actually something I'm picking up is going to be at least part of a Xmas gift. I don't know, everybody is driving weird AF today. Somebody just like stopped in the middle of an intersection. Somebody had their blinker on for a good like two blocks and never moved over. I don't know what's going on. So I'm gonna get back to driving and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. <laughs> I have Halloween Town pulled up on the TV, and I gotta go get this stuff to make the treat bags, right, Mike? Everything's down in our crawl space, so let's go grab it. All right, here is some of it, but this is definitely a big chunk of it. I'm gonna try to drag this stuff up now. Here's more. Some treat stuff in here, too. I believe we have everything out now. It's so like should we factory. should we do a little tour? So we've got some of these things that we don't have as many of, and I think like each bag is gonna get one of these. Not one of each, one of them, including these. These are some really adorable little peanuts crayons that I got from a thrift store. So oh. cute. And then these are of course Target. We have plenty of these, so every kid gets a little eraser. So adorable. I think every the favorite. Yeah, is that's adorable. One. I love we that. have one collectible one from 2023. Oh my god, look at him! <laughs> we have plenty of rings, so every kid's gonna get a ring. We have plenty of the bubble wands, so every kid will get that. Those are also from Target. We have more than enough fangs, so every kid will get fangs. Again, Target. I have these saved from last year, the Pokemon Trick or Trade, and we actually have plenty of them, so each kid will get that as well. Even though I think they actually have the same edition out this year, so who cares that they're from Where last year? Where did we get these? I think Costco. Are these from Costco? These are so fun. Yeah. And there's like... They're kind of a hit. Kids are always like, is that Pokemon Three cards? Three additional game cards, yeah. These are from Amazon. These are, I had to like rip them all apart, but these are little like temporary tattoos. So each kid gets one and they are all completely different designs. I like this little guy. <laughs> yeah. 
Knowledge is um, power. Plenty of Reese's, so each kid will get one. These are like the Halloween shape ones. We have bats and pumpkins. The pretzels, we only have 70. These are from Costco, so we'll just use those until we run out of them. And That's a good jug, too. 70 is quite a lot, though, but we kind of expect about 100, so we may be running well, out. We got more than 100 last year. I am absolutely going to be taking the candy. <laughs> As I decide to make these. We had more yeah. than 100 last year. We had made 100, I believe, 100 bags. And we ran out, like, yeah. right at the end. And we had to run over to my mom's house and just get some candy. We didn't even have candy to give kids. Candy. We have an extra thing of candy, though. We have, like, oh. a whole other, like, big bag. Yes. <laughs> we have plenty that if we run out of the bags that have everything, we definitely at least have candy to put in bags. And speaking of bags, we have plenty. Candy. And as you can see, like, again, I thrift some of these that are really cute. These are some Target ones. These are actually from our wedding. I think these are from Michael's last year. These are probably thrifted ones. And then I have a ton of vintage thrifted ones. They don't hold as much, so I kind of put those in the back just in case. But last but not least, we have just miscellaneous candy. This is, like, the chocolate pack from Costco. It comes with just, like, a variety, but it's, like, all the good ones. Like, I Twix, Three Musketeers. Yes. The one that runs that brewery that we went to loves 100 grands too and she also bought these packs and she's like okay so why do we only get three 100 that's what i'm saying <laughs> there was like five in each of those bags yeah. and it's like 150 pieces in a bag yeah. like that's ridiculous which is funny because i mean i much prefer <laughs> like the m ms and reese's no. and kit kats go this like it's all the good ones which is nice because like i don't want to give them that candy that's like palmer's garbage no, this is not i'm treating house. these kids this to a nice little, little halloween so you come to my house you get fed and you have a good time yeah <laughs> ryan's got his little spooky beer the Voodoo. Voodoo. It's pumpkin. pumpkin. Yes. It's delicious. One of our favorites. It's like the spice version, so it has a little like... Yeah, it's supposed to have kind of really a good. spicy pumpkin flavor, but it is so good. And then I have wine. Mine is the Bride of Frankenstein 19 Crimes from this year. <laughs> Speaking of, one of the containers is the 19 Crimes Dracula from last year. We begin, and each kid gets one of each, as we say. So we will get going, and we got to turn on a tradition. Halloween Yay! Town 1. I haven't seen it yet this year. This movie is as old as I am. <sighs> Which is old. 26. <laughs> 26 in like two weeks. Okay, but how do I get that outfit of the like, the blue wizard? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How do I get that hat? Oh, wait. I'm trying to like... Oh, they are! Oh, that's a fun one. I enjoy that. The talisman. Bring the back talisman. the talisman. Almost forgot, we have glow sticks also. I had to run down and grab them. A hundred of these too. We are getting almost to the end of the movie, which is kind of perfect timing. Because it's look so at all these we bags. Have so many bags. We have at least, I think a hundred, though we had some extras of some of these. I think some of these were packs of 30, but I still bought five bags of them. Should we do a bag haul? So we got some extras, but we have a bag haul. These oh. cute little, like, these are super cute. We have, I like the handle, um, functionality, 10 out of 10. These are from our wedding, actually, because people could leave with treat bags, so I bought a bunch of those. The Ziploc function. And just an update on the glow sticks. We thought it'd actually be fun to, like, break them night of as the kids show up, because then we could, like, put them around their arms or give them yeah, to their parents yeah. or, or something. Like, especially on, like, <laughs> not to bring these out, I can, like, clip them. Yeah. Also, I did get a hand tattoo if anybody's wondering. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Spider webs. Oh, these are super cute. Yeah. I am going through the painstaking process of tying these, but that's okay. Um, my personal favorite. These talk about Halloween, Pumpkin like ones. triggering memory. The leaf bags that you put like, oh, yeah. that look like jack lanterns that you like fill full of leaves that like people in my neighborhood would leave them out until like the day before Christmas Eve, then yeah. throw them away and fill them full of ones that look like Christmas trees. That's what this I is. talked about those like two weeks ago. And those are super. Cute. We have some little like black tats. cats. Yeah. Super cute. Mm -hmm. Those aren't as like we foldable. They're yeah. kind of, they're more of like almost when you get those like Christmas like Starbucks say, mugs like with the coffee big, bags like, or like, bags. or if you do those like <laughs> charity auctions and you get like a basket. Yeah, that's It's like I'm an Easter about. basket that, material. Like, so yeah. And then we have those. We have these ones too. The... Oh yeah, duh. And then we have these really cute little like spooky pumpkin with the little like 
pumpkin gut flour. Yeah. So just in case turnout is super high, we got plenty of candy left and we got a few things left. We just don't want to like overproduce. And also we ran out of like half of the little prizes. So instead of making a bunch of ones missing prizes, we thought we'd do that. And then if any of the like direct neighbors, the ones that we obviously know personally show up, we have some like random stuff I found at Goodwill that's like a little fancier. Our neighbor kids, like our direct neighbor kids do definitely get like the cream crop. Yeah. We but used like, to do that at my parents' I house. don't think that that's biased because they have to put up with me 364 days out of the year. Yeah. So here's an extra And the dogs running around barking. Screaming so. at them when they're trying to go play volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. Like this one. He says, can I have a piece of candy? No, Mike. You cannot. This one's just going to sleep the whole time. Tooting and sleeping. Yeah. Farting is all. Good morning. <laughs> How are you, baby? Are you helping no. <laughs> True words. Have been, true words. Have been said. <laughs> We're gonna give the dogs the first of their little pet treat bucket. Boo bucket. I was gonna save it for Halloween, but then I just thought to myself, oh yeah, there's like 15 cookies in here, so let's start it off. Looks like we've got a set of eyeballs. It wasn't notarized. <laughs> we busted out an old buddy to help us hold. Oh my gosh, well, chaotic. To hold the candy bags. <laughs> um, Will <laughs> hates wearing clothes, and we have some spooky pajamas for the babes. Oh my gosh, Will. What are you doing, dude? I'm embarrassed. Oh my good lord. He's fighting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you good? What <laughs> are you doing? You are okay. <laughs> hey, baby. As Mike's like, I love my pajamas. <laughs> Mike is very into clothing, and Will is not. <laughs> as you can tell. Right, baby? Yeah. Happy Sunday, ghouls and ghosties. Hi! I know that this is the first time checking in for the day. <laughs> My head shape is a little... Ryan looks like a sad clown. <laughs> it's a little interesting. I know this is the first time we're checking in for the day, but that is because we've literally been filming all day just for the other channel. So we just filmed, like, our version of the Halloween special this year, which is just us doing kind of a haul of clothing and being in costume. There might be a little bit of fun sprinkled in there, though. Yeah! <laughs> but otherwise, like I, you guys knew, we had plans to carve pumpkins tonight, but actually we're thinking that we might just take it easy easy and chill tonight Ugh, and for, so our, for our anniversary tomorrow it'd be pretty fun to carve yeah. pumpkins so we might do that tomorrow but my my mother might be coming over to have some mummy dogs with us so we are gonna make mummy dogs tonight and maybe watch a spooky movie or something i so. live, live for a mummy dog <laughs> So I think she's Do gonna have crescent rolls i bought them today i think she's gonna head away from work right now so i should start getting the mummy dogs ready yeah Morning, ghouls and ghosties, and happy 28th of October, and happy Monday. So it is Ryan and I's anniversary, and what are we doing for our anniversary? We are working and going thrifting. <laughs> Shocker from us, but it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fine. We're only gonna go for probably a little while, and then tonight we're gonna do some kind of date night. We still, I don't think, have pinpointed where we wanna go to eat. We're talking about a kind of nicer pizza place, but it's kind of a far drive, and I don't know if pizza's the most, like, romantic meal. 
so I don't know. We haven't decided, but I did stop this morning to get the fancy version of my Starbucks pumpkin drink that has all the extras and all the cold foam and everything because I did have enough stars too so I just thought I would treat myself it just sounded good and I just thought why well, spend money when I can have a really good drink for free so I am currently driving off to the gym trying to not go blind currently driving off to the gym Ryan took the day off for our anniversary and we will be carving pumpkins today so that's gonna be a fun little like anniversary activity oh my gosh blind I'm blind. As you guys saw, I basically tested out my Halloween costume, kind of, like a like a watered down version of this year's Halloween costume yesterday for our main channel video. And I'm pretty excited. I think it's gonna turn out quite good, my campy counselor costume. Actually, I also fully edited that video and I'm, I'm really, oh, that's right. I can talk about it because if, if any of you are from the other channel, you've seen it already. I'm pretty excited about that video. We put in some gags that were kind of like supposed to be surprises. And of course, like we were in costume and I don't know. It just, I, I'm proud of it. It was, it was pretty like, low budget, pretty quickly put together and quickly planned. So I'm happy that it turned out kind of like at all. Past years we've done full blown, as you guys maybe know, cause I talked about it last week, but we've done full blown like Halloween specials where we literally do like skits. We film for quite a few different days and quite a few different like spots. I have to like write them out almost like a script. Like there's a lot more that goes into them, but for some reason each year, maybe that's just not the channel for it, but for some reason each year, they they just don't get like the love that I would think. Not that people say anything mean about them or anything, but it's just like, it's, they flop a little harder than I expect them to. And it's happened a couple times now. And so I'm just now at this point of like, why should I put in so much work and thought and time if they don't do as good as I would like? Like, not that I need them to go viral or do anything, but like I'm saying they literally do kind of like worse than if we just put up some regular schmegular like thrifting video. And so it's always kind of a bummer. And I just thought, why put myself through that this year? So I didn't. So we just did a little, a little mix of spookiness with kind of a regular scheduled programming. But I really like how it turned out. I think it's really fun and it, it satisfies me and my, my spooky, my spookiness. Maybe I'll just have to start doing Halloween specials on this channel, who knows? <laughs> Even though I feel like every video is a Halloween special on this channel. Of course, I'm like totally off topic and like rambling. Today, yeah, just like a kind of a regular Monday, which if you've been with me for the past three weeks, usually isn't super full of spooky stuff. But again, we will be carving our pumpkin slater, which I still haven't decided on my faces of them yet. And we will be going to some kind of dinner. I'm gonna have my coffee now. I need the energy from it to work out. <laughs> but I am getting all the pumpkins ready. So we each have kind of a tall one and then we each have kind of a stockier round one. These are really, really big. <laughs> if you can't tell, like here is a KitchenAid bowl. Like these are huge. So this is quite a project, but I also still don't know what my faces are gonna be. So we'll see, I guess. But we're gonna probably watch a Halloween movie while we do this. I'm just kind of waiting for him to come home. I do have the like drill attachment to scoop out the guts. And I do want to save some of the seeds, not only to plant next year, but also to make delicious seeds. So maybe I'll start cutting mine open now, I guess. I gotta get my drill. strategy is to gut them both first and Ryan is just going in I carve and carving up his first one after he gutted it yeah. and then he's gonna gut his second one 
So I'm on gutting number two. Are we ready? for the big reveal of the 2024 pumpkins, <laughs> the jack-o'-lanterns. So first up, we have Ryan's on this side. He made this kind of derpy, moon-eyed dude <laughs> with one tooth. Then he decided to make a very classic one, which of course I can appreciate something very vintage and classic, so I think that's very cute. My first one is this spicy one. So he kind of looked like a pepper, and so it made me want to make him look like spicy so he's sweating and his eyes are on fire and he's kind of screaming and i think he's really cute and he's super tall too and then we have a very happy vampire as my last one i did do his nose on purpose that kind of like half a nose i don't really know why but that was on purpose so here is the lineup for 2024 super cute i'm obsessed Hello, ghouls and ghosties, and welcome to Tuesday. It is not the morning, as you can maybe tell, and I am out and about, as you can also tell. And I am headed right now to Half Price Books, because we are going to check for one last time this season the Half Price Book spooky section and see what kind of like fun kids and photo and nostalgia books they have. I don't have a horror movie or spooky movie in mind this time since I found Scream last time, but I am open to whatever, so we're gonna go take a peek. My dream forever and ever would be to find the Over the Garden Wall art book, but those things are like a thousand dollars, so I guarantee that will probably never happen, but you can always hope and dream, which is what I'm doing. So anyways, that is where I'm headed right now i've otherwise just been doing some work today as per usual it was nothing exciting nothing fun to show you guys but now we're on to the more fun or at least enjoyable part of the day i'm gonna be stopping at half price books like i just said and then we're gonna be going home to do talk or treat so for talk or treat this week i do sort of have a topic but at the same time i have to retouch on a topic we've already covered and that is from last week the paranormal experiences one of you watching actually reminded me of one of my own paranormal experiences that I cannot believe I forgot. So thank you. It, it has to be someone from the other channel because we only talked about it on there. But when we were in Salem, there was a paranormal experience that was probably honestly actually the most obviously paranormal experience that I have had. That is something that I want to tell you guys about today. And that's going to lead me into my topic for today. And that is going to be Salem. I haven't yet talked to you guys much about Salem and our trip to Salem. So I'm just going to tell you some of my favorite places and things accompanied by some footage because I did take footage when we were there. I still do want to do a standalone Salem kind of experience video, Salem tips, Salem info, because I still have all that footage. But I do want to talk to you guys about some of my favorite things that were at Salem because I just, Salem puts me in such a like good, spooky nice mood and I just I want to that's kind of what I want to talk about but I'm gonna go to half price books now and then we'll go home and talk or treat for the most part half price books had a lot of the same kids spooky books as they had last time I was here though I did notice on the other side of this kind of display they did have some actual DVDs and CDs so I did take a look at those Hi ghouls and ghosties, how is everyone? So I have my purchases here. I did make some purchases at Half Price Books. But before I get into that, welcome to the final talk or treat of 2024. I cannot believe it. And I don't wanna focus on it too long because it's just depressing. There's nothing positive about that at all. I hope you guys have been enjoying talk or treats again this year. They have still continued to be my favorite favorite, favorite part of Vlogoween, honestly. Like I love taking you guys along with all the stuff that I do and I love including you guys and showing you what I'm doing and being able to re-look back and watch the stuff that I did do in the season. But at the same time, Talk or Treat is so much fun. I love 
delving into my own mental nostalgia and just bringing memories back that I honestly had like buried in my head. And I also love to read you guys' responses and your stories and your memories. You guys have been participating so much and I've really appreciated it. There were some of you that typed out super, super long paranormal stories last week, which was amazing. Like you guys did not have to take the time out of your day to type that out, but multiple of you did. And it was so fun to read and eerie and creepy and ooky and spooky to read too. But I really appreciate you guys sticking along and being such good participants and answering my questions and sharing your memories. I really appreciate it. And Talk or Treat will 1 million million percent be back next year in the Vlogoweens of next year. I don't know if we could ever do another seasonal Talk or Treat. I mean, I guess you could for like other holidays if we ever ventured off into doing something like that, but it, it just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> I mean, it, it's possible, but it just, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the same. Um, so anyways, thank you for enjoying and participating in my talk retreats. Let me know how you felt about them. But otherwise, let me show you my purchases after I show you what my treat is. Now, I don't remember if this was my treat for the first one or not. You guys will probably remember better than me. It might have been, but I did grab some more witch Kit Kats. They just sound really good. And so that's why I grabbed them. I have a ton of other candy to choose from. I have candy corn. I actually have some apple crisp kind of thing that sounds really good too. Ryan even bought me some pumpkin like mochi, mochi things like those like ice cream pocket things. All that sounds good, but this sounded the best. My beautiful slime green Kit Kats. Delish. Okay, so at Half Price Books, I spent $35.65. And you might be like, Jack, you showed us the clips when you were there. What did you find to spend that on? Didn't you already see all those books before? Yes, I did. But there was actually a case that I didn't get any footage of, like a locked case that has like really expensive collectible pieces. What also just had some kind of random stuff. I don't know if they think that it could be stolen or something, but one of the things I got from that was like five bucks anyway, so I don't really get it. But I did buy two of the CDs. Now, I don't listen to CDs. I don't even know what I have that could play CDs, to be honest. Wait, sometimes DVD players can. These just bring so much nostalgia to my brain that I like to use some of this like media as decor. As you guys know, with like some of my books, I just think it is so nice decor wise. It's kind of like out of the box versus having like a sit on the shelf ceramic piece to have like something real, something that can be used, consumed, whatever. And we always would have Halloween CDs and cassettes when I was a kid. In my parents' car, there were cassettes, but in the house there were CDs. And this one just, I've seen one like this before with this kind of like more creepy graphic. I like this font a lot and I just love the colors of all of this. This is literally just sound effects. It's so good. It's so nostalgic. I'll probably use it as decor all the time and set it either on one of the TV stands or the bookshelf or something like that. And I was obsessed with the art on this one. I love the skeleton dude. Again, this will be amazing decor. I am gonna take these stickers off, of course. I think this is also just sound effects, including demon dogs and demon cats and lunatic laughter and hungry ghouls. Oh yeah, even better. Even better. It's even a different graphic on the CD. I just, I love it. It is just too nostalgic. Even if I didn't own this as a kid, like this exact one, it's just so, so early 2000s, 90s, like nostalgia. So my other two purchases are also very nostalgic media. And I'm actually really excited about these. And these are absolutely gonna be decor as well. I do not have something that can play these. And they are going to be all year round decor on my TV stand. So first up is a VHS of the original Halloween. I am obsessed. I love the screenshots on the back. I just like, I love the big Halloween letters on the side. Iconic, so cool. I have no VHS player. Some of you are probably like, what in the world is wrong with you? But I, as you guys can tell, am just a Halloween collector. So I will collect anything spooky that I can kind of get my hands on. I had heard that Spirit Halloween had some like VHS, like fake VHSs 
of like Terrifier, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, maybe stuff like that, maybe Scream. And they came with like little prize packs inside. I never saw those. I would have loved to buy them, but it was like a VHS case that held them. So I got that. And then I also got this one. This one was 20. <laughs> but when I looked them up, this was actually like a good deal. So I wouldn't have normally spent 20 on something like this, but they're really, really high online. This is Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. And again, I just love the cover art. It is so cool. Absolutely gonna be an all year round like decor on the TV stand piece. Just so cool and nostalgic to have a VHS. And yes, they do have like, the real VHS is in them. Fantastic, they do have tape in them too, so they actually do contain the movie if I do end up getting a VHS player. <laughs> so I thought they were worth it. I think that's really cool. I don't think this is something you would commonly find. Trust me, as someone that thrifts all the time, like you do not see VHS tapes ever. So if there is one you were specifically looking for, good freaking luck. So I'm actually really happy to have those. All right, so let's move on to some talk about Salem. So I'm gonna maybe do some pictures and some videos as we discuss this. And the first thing about Salem is my paranormal experience that Ryan and I fully experienced together that I somehow completely forgot last week. But I would argue that this is the one that I am inclined most to feel like is a genuine paranormal experience because it was weird. So we were going to all the Hocus Pocus locations as you do in Salem and we we're going to my favorite one. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite one of all of them. And that was the cemetery where Max in the beginning bikes off to when he's like racing away from school and the two bullies pop out from behind like one of the gravestones. We were there, stunning, beautiful, one of the most peaceful and like just calming places I've ever been. I'm a weird person but I find cemeteries and graveyards to be extremely like calming. It's very, very peaceful, especially this one. It was like, I was reborn. It was fantastic. It was so, so peaceful and calming. And we just kind of walked around there for a while. There was not a peep of noise, note. We were the only people there besides one person, one dude. And this dude was just also quietly walking around. I think he was taking some pictures, which is what we were doing too. So we're looking around. I really wanted to take a picture exactly where the bullies like jumped out, where the scene happens. We found that spot and I took it and we we're just kind of looking around. A lot of the tombstones are extremely, extremely old. It was really cool taking a lot of pictures, whatever. Not doing anything disrespectful, of course, but it was super, super beautiful and really cool to see. So mind you that this random dude we could see him and he was way, way far away. Not that he was doing anything, but like we noticed he was far away. Ryan and I are a little bit separate just looking at tombstones. Suddenly I hear what sounds like somebody as if they were standing on top of like a taller tombstone and jumped off and just poof, like kind of picture the sound of like two feet really hard landing on grass, not concrete, nothing just like, or like someone dropping a really big boulder onto grass, just like a really big thud, like soft thud, but it was loud and it caught my attention. Like I reacted and I like turned and I stared in the direction and it was just wide open. There were gravestones, but it was wide open. There was nobody there, no animals, none of the ducks or birds were there. And again, this place was mute, completely silent. So that was really odd. And I told Ryan, I was like, I swear I just heard something either heavily fall or someone jump off of a tombstone onto the ground or something. That was really weird, that sound, huh? And I explained it to him and he's like, oh yeah, that's weird. And Ryan very much subscribes to spirits, ghosts, all that stuff. So he was like, oh yeah, I bet it's like a spirit either jumping or like pounding on something. And I was like, yeah. Whatever, it was really weird and I know I heard it. I wasn't freaked out. It wasn't like I felt threatened. It was just really odd. So I, th we then decided to, like to leave. So we're heading back to the car. You gotta go down kind of this hill to where you park. So we're going down this pretty steep hill and suddenly behind us, now this was maybe like five-ish minutes after that like thump noise. We are going down this hill, suddenly behind us, Again, this man was nowhere near this other dude that was there. He might've even left at this point. We hear what sounds like somebody stepping on like a thicker branch and it totally just snapped. Like big 
snap sound. Again, kind of sounding like it was coming from on the ground or like, like on grass. It's so hard to explain, but it was like a, it was exactly like if somebody stepped onto wood and it broke kind of into the grass loud. We both totally turned around. Again, like completely reacting at the exact same time. Nothing, nothing was there. Nothing at all. Not a person, not an animal. Even if there had been a bird, like that was not a sound a bird would make. Absolutely sounded like a branch snapping. Pretty loud. It was almost as if something was kind of like walking with us while we were there. And kind of as we were leaving, it caught both of our attention, but we both heard it for sure. We both explained it in the same way. Again, there was nobody else around or there. And this place was mute, dead, silent. And that's what happened in Salem. That was the Salem paranormal experience. Like I said, I felt the most like paranormal vibes, I guess. I don't know what other word there is from that one. That felt weird, especially being where we were and having it be such a historic cemetery and also having the sounds happen kind of like twice and us both reacting right at the same moment it was very, very weird and unexplainable. And I do lean towards that one being a genuine paranormal experience. Not that I don't with the other ones from last week, but that one really, really felt really off. Again, not threatening. Even when we were leaving, we both like, it didn't cause any panic. There was no like, oh my gosh, something's like hunting us or following us. It just felt like somebody's there. <laughs> somebody's behind us. Like somebody in the spirit world is right over there, like watching or following. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit more about Salem. So I'm just gonna chit chat with you guys about like my favorite places in Salem for the next like eight minutes or so and show you some pictures and some videos. One of my favorite stores was Black Craft. Now, a lot of you probably have heard of Black Craft because they make kind of like gothic emo clothing. It's kind of like a Dolls Kill or a Hot Topic or a Kill Star or something like that. And they sell clothes. It maybe leans a little more towards Halloween because there's like a lot of jack-o'-lanterns and scaredy cats and stuff. So it leans a little more towards Halloween than Gothic, but it definitely has both. And they have their only store there. Really cool store. They do have pretty high prices, but a lot of Gothic clothing is expensive, but it's a huge, beautiful store. It used to be a bank, but they painted the whole inside black. It's stunning. On the ceiling is like the world's biggest freaking witch statue. It is insane how big it is and how cool it is. And in the back, there's actually a coffee shop. Now, sometimes you can go in, sometimes you can't. They have different hours in the store. And sometimes it's too busy that they actually have like a wait list for the coffee. But we were able to get in since we obviously went in August, so it was not peak season. We were able to get into the coffee like three different days and holy moly, their coffee is amazing. It is like the best coffee I have ever freaking had. They had like three or four different options. And they were all kind of like, one was like a witch's brew. One was pumpkin spice latte. And they all had these kind of different, like autumnal fall spooky flavors to them. And they were, I tried two different ones. I know I tried the pumpkin one. And then I tried another one that I would have to almost look at the menu to remember what it was, but they were so, so good. Like it was not just a like, ha ha like this is good because like, of the vibes and the fun, like everything's black and whatever. No, like it was, you could put that into like a gas station. I'd be like, this is the best coffee I've had in my entire life. Like it, it, it was just, the coffee itself was amazing. So the store was really cool. The coffee was really amazing. Of course, the witch house was really, really, really cool. I think the coolest part about it is just seeing it from the outside because you can tour it. It's not the most thrilling tour. We wanted to do like everything. So we did do it. And I mean, it was cool, but it's very, very historic. Obviously the tour and you self guide and you just kind of read a bunch of stuff, which I'm sure a lot of people would love, but the best part of, of the witch house is the exterior. It's stunning and we will, mark my words, within the next two years, paint our house to be a dark, dark, dark gray near black. And I'm so excited, so excited. I'll have my own little witch house. The best tour we took. So we did a number of tours, like night tours that you sign up through like on different websites or through different stores. Some are worth it, some are not. Again, if I ever do a video in the future more deep 
I will talk about that. A tour that is actually, interestingly enough, in a building, and like you take the tour in the building and you can do it anytime, you just walk in and do it, is the Ouija Board Museum. And it is the coolest, coolest, coolest thing ever. And the guy that runs it is the owner, and he totally gives you a private tour with private information about Ouija boards. Right when we walked in, he asked where we were from, Minneapolis, and he's like, that Ouija board and that Ouija board are from Minneapolis. Here's a fun fact, they had to use a different name because Minneapolis didn't have some kind of rights and like super, super like custom to you, super personal. He is the most informed Ouija board expert of all time. We asked him so many questions he knew the answer instantly to all of them. He knows about any movie based off Ouija, any history, any country's use of Ouija boards, any hauntings that came from Ouija boards, any falsehoods that were spread about Ouija boards, the name changing, the original ones, what they used to be called, all the different names they went through, all the different additions they have. It was mind blowing and it was so worth the money. I'll have to look up what store it was in, but just go to the Ouija board museum when you go. It is the coolest, one of the best experiences we had. So our favorite store was a, it was actually a pop-up. So that kind of sucks that if people go in the future, it might not be there, but they have a museum there, which is amazing. It has nothing that, I mean, there might be sometimes different spooky exhibits. When we went, there were not, but the museum was amazing. We did go into it and it's just a really good museum, but the museum opened a pop-up shop and it was a fully spooky pop-up shop about like ghosts and phantoms and the afterlife and kind of like magic and stuff like that. So cool. I went crazy buying stuff there. Most of my souvenirs and stuff I bought came from there. So that was really, really awesome. So we did the trolley tour on the first day, which so many people online suggested doing as your first tour, and I 100% agree with it. It's a really good price again. I think it was like 25 each. So, I mean, arguably a really good price. It's totally worth it. It's like an hour to an hour and a half long. You just ride a trolley around the entire, like even to the outskirts, all around the entire city of Salem. They tell you so much interesting facts. All of their hosts are really funny. Their bus drivers are really funny and informative. Like everyone knows so much on that tour. They really camp it up. They really are interactive. They ask you questions. It's it's really great. And then another highlight, of course, was our broom making class. So we both made, I think, the largest brooms that you can make. There's like three different sizes at three different prices. It's like 80, 90, and $100, or 80, 100, and 120 or something. We did do the biggest one. This was for our honeymoon, so we were like, go big or go home. We both made brooms. If you watched any of the decorating with me videos, I showed you guys the brooms that we made together. They are so cute, and it was a very like magical experience. So we took it with a, there was this entire bridal party doing it, and then us too, because it only does like obviously eight people at once or 10 people at once. One of the girls started crying. Ryan and I were like weirdly emotional doing this together. Like it's a really, really fun experience. Every little piece you put on has like a different symbol behind it. You can pick the little accessories you add on. You pick the colors you want to do. You can add on, you can take off. You kind of can do whatever you want and they teach you. Kind of a long class, so it's worth the money that you're paying. Like it's like, again, it's like an hour, hour and a half. Amazing, I totally recommend that. I know if you go during September or October, it's really, really hard to get in. Again, I would just suggest going in August. I feel like that's, that's the main highlights I think I wanted to touch on. There were so many other amazing experiences. We went to a tattoo shop, if you guys want a tattoo recommendation for Salem in the future. We went to many different restaurants, including this really fancy one that was so delicious. And then there was this really amazing beachside one that we went to multiple times. It was really good prices and really, really cool. We went to every different shop. We took like four or five night tours and ghost tours. I have a trillion recommendations and things to say. We saw every single Hocus Pocus location. We did do the full blown Salem experience. So again, in the future, I would love to do a full blown Salem experience review tips video for you guys. So let me know if you wanna see that in the future, but otherwise I don't want this talk or treat to take up the entire video. So let's move on. Tomorrow is kind of prep day. Tom 
<laughs> tomorrow is Halloween Eve. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna stay at home tomorrow and put up some of my other animatronics. Some of the animatronics I wait till like the last minute because I don't want them to get damaged or anything like my man-eating plant and Nosferatu. <laughs> So that's probably tomorrow. Tomorrow's like the big prep day for Halloween. And then Thursday's Halloween. Ah, so I need to leave room in this video so you guys can make it to the Halloween footage. So that's why I'm gonna cut this off here. But let me know if you've been to Salem. Let me know if you've taken a spooky trip somewhere like Sleepy Hollow or something, or like New Orleans or something like that in the past. What'd you think? Do you wanna go to Salem? Have you heard of things to do there? Thank you for listening to me ramble about one of the best places on earth. Good morning, ghouls and ghosties, and happy Halloween Eve. Though it kills me to say it, and it makes me actually like really sad. It is the day before Halloween. It is Wednesday the 30th. Uh, <laughs> and I am right now, I just got done at the gym and I am, I need to donate some stuff. So I'm at actually a savers slash unique right now. And I'm gonna run in just cause I actually just donate. So I'm gonna run in and I'm just gonna see if there's any Halloween stuff. I got an email from them today saying Halloween was half off if they had anything. So I'm just gonna check. Usually I don't find much here, but I guess you never know. And then I do have a Bath and Body Works pickup to do, but it's just hand soap. There's nothing spooky or exciting about that. And then I don't know. I need to watch like some spooky movies or something and light a pumpkin candle or something. I just, I feel like I'm feeling a bit down today. I know I should be excited and happy that tomorrow's Halloween, but I feel kind of down. And I don't know if it's just from Halloween coming up or what the deal is, but yeah, I'm kind of feeling a little down. Anyways, oh, here's something cool. So Ryan went to Ikea the other day and somehow for some reason, they were giving out spooky freaking silly bands. Who remembers silly bands? I remember in middle school, this was like all the rage and they are official brand silly bands. So it looks like you get a ghost, Frankenstein, spider, witch, jack-o'-lantern and bat. And there they are in the front. I'm obsessed. I don't, I've never heard of Ikea carrying or handing out silly bands, but <laughs> I'll take them. That's really awesome. Anyways, I'm gonna go in and see what they have. Then I'm gonna go to Bath and Body and I will check in with you guys with whatever else seems to happen today. I found this spooky snowman, which honestly would be a perfect spooky Christmas decoration for me, but he is broken. And I also found this really cute candle. I like the face on it. And ghouls and ghosties, I found freaking Joanna Parker at a thrift store. I have only maybe one other time found Joanna Parker at a thrift store. And this is a new inbox set of two. I don't have either of these pieces. I also love these skeleton lights. The packaging, honestly, is like the best part of this. All right, so I'm home now, finally, and I picked up my Bath and Body Works. I think I'm gonna watch a spooky movie and I haven't decided what yet. So I haven't watched Scream yet because usually that's kind of like a Halloween, like day of situation for me. And I haven't decided if I want to watch that today. I kind of want to rewatch Halloween 3, the one that people used to like really not like, but it's kind of becoming like a cult classic now and it has like its own niche following. I watched it for the first time last year and it was like pretty decent. It it, it you have to go into it as if it's like a separate movie from the Halloween series kind of so I kind of almost feel like I want to watch that though there's still quite a list of ones I haven't seen yet I want to watch the new it's like Salem's Lot or something like that and then there's a couple other ones in the Halloween franchise I wanted to watch and I'd have to check my list but I still I know I had a few I try to watch the horror movies alone because Ryan's not into those Ryan and I are actually pretty close to being through our list which is crazy because last year we were really bad about that actually I have like a bunch of stuff work-wise to sort <laughs> in front of me like clothing and stuff so this is gonna take me a while and then it'll probably be lunchtime and stuff so I have like good time to sit here and pay close attention to whatever I'm watching so it's between Halloween 3 and Scream should I ask Google do you think Google can make that decision for me okay Google should I watch Scream or Halloween 3 right now sorry I didn't understand I decided on Halloween 3 since Google couldn't help me make the decision because I think I want to watch Scream tomorrow on actual Halloween. Halloween 3 it is. Let's go. Good morning, ghouls and ghosties. Please ignore the bedhead. I just woke up and Ryan just headed out the door and it is freaking Halloween. So happy Halloween, everybody. I woke up to the sound of rain pouring outside, but I checked the weather and luckily it seems like that is gonna be stopping. It's gonna rain for a while, but it's gonna be ending, I think around like lunchtime or a little after. 
It's chilly cold today, so I just really hope it doesn't turn into snow. I don't think it will. Google said that it's going to, but it's only gonna get down to like 38, which is not obviously snow weather, so I don't think it is. But I'm really hoping that doesn't like hinder the amount of trick-or-treaters we get. Maybe people will just go out a little earlier because it's going to obviously get colder as the night goes on but i mean in minnesota we're really used to cold cold halloweens i remember as a kid we would have some halloweens that were like frigid like freezing where i had like snow pants and the puffer jacket on like under my costume so you just look like those inflatable costumes but you're not inflated you're just wearing down feathers underneath basically it is halloween i'm so excited this is the best day of the year and Today is not the day to focus on the season coming to an end. It's a focus on the finale of the season. As I've told you guys before, my tradition on Halloween is I wake up and before anything else, I watch SpongeBob SquarePants, Scaredy Pants, the first like spooky Halloween episode they ever made and definitely the most Halloween centric one. I haven't watched it all season. And there's a couple things I've saved for today that I haven't watched. I have not watched Garfield's Halloween all season, which is my favorite Halloween special. I haven't watched Scream, which is tied for my favorite horror movie of all time. And speaking of my favorite horror movie of all time, I kind of really want to re-watch the original Halloween today. It just seems so fitting. I love that one too. Our like other channel Halloween special thing comes out at four. So I might premiere that so I can like chat with people possibly, even though when I premiere, like no one shows up. <laughs> So there's usually no point. So I'm gonna quit blabbing because I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of stuff to show and talk about today, but I hope you guys, I know it's a day later, but I hope you guys had a fantastic Halloween. I am living it now. I'm from the past right now for you guys. And it's just starting for me, but I hope since yours is over, it was amazing. I am gonna watch SpongeBob now. And then I want some pumpkin coffee. Of course, the dogs got some of their spooky cookies this morning. I had bought this treat pail for them to enjoy on Halloween, though I've been giving them a few of them throughout the season. I also thought that if anyone brought their dog to trick or treat at our house, I could give them one. So we'll see if anyone shows up with a dog. Of course, I had to start off with some pumpkin coffee this morning too. The caribou pumpkin coffee is my absolute favorite. about 11 o'clock now and I am just running our pumpkin seeds from the other night on kind of a low temperature just to dry them out in the air fryer and I think I'm gonna roast the pumpkin seeds though I did of course save some because I want to plant some of them next year but I have a lot and what better to do on Halloween than roast pumpkin seeds that seems very fitting to me also this is from last weekend no I'm not having wine at 11 a.m. <laughs> um ghouls and ghosties I don't know if you can tell but it's like sleeting, sleet, snow, something. Uh, no, no. Oh my gosh, I can see my breath. No. Oh my gosh. I hope it stops. All right, so the weather app, out the front, it looks even worse. The weather app says that it is supposed to stop any precipitation at about two, and then it's gonna like warm up a couple degrees again. I hate this. I hate this so much. What a blustery, dreary Halloween. Um, as long as like snow doesn't stay on the ground and people still trick or treat. <laughs> Why can't you just wait till tomorrow, okay? Just give me one more day. All right, ghouls and ghosties, I'm meeting my mom. Well, actually I'm riding with her. She's about to pick me up for lunch and it's still snowing. I'm actually gonna do my pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna finish them after. I'm letting them dry a bit more, but let me show you my outfit. I'm ready for a cold Halloween. <laughs> Here's the outfit. 
They got some spooky boots. Can you see the toes? I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen these by now. I got some kind of like punk goth pants. I have a sweater and a skeleton puffer. So I'm ready <laughs> to go out in the cold. This could literally almost be like a Halloween costume, but I feel, you know what? I like this outfit, okay? So whatever, cold weather. I gotta whip out this bad boy. We're not going anywhere spooky for lunch. We're just going to a grocery store that you kind of like, it's almost like a buffet, but you pay by the pound. I, I don't know, there's a bunch of different options and I thought it sounded good to like have quite a few options, but it is still snowing. It's like melting as it hits the ground, thank goodness. What time is it? It's like one. So really this should be done in like an hour, which gives plenty of time for it to like melt again. Like I said, it's supposed to heat up actually a little bit more after. I like this outfit. So whatever, whatever, whatever snow, I was prepared with a spooky snowproof outfit. We are back home now and it is time to work on our seeds. So we have about five-ish cups of pumpkin seeds here. And the recipe I'm looking at is for one cup. So of course, we're just multiplying it. So I have all the seasonings right here that go on the seeds. I measured out enough for five cups. And I have enough of butter for five cups here too. So I just gotta melt that. And you just literally mix it all together and then air fry it. I'm gonna have to air fry it a few times because you're supposed to just do one layer of seeds so they evenly fry. So this is gonna take a little bit but it's really such an easy thing to do and they are so good. After, of course you can add whatever seasonings you want. They called for pepper, salt, and I think garlic powder, but I did some onion powder, I did some onion salt, I did a little bit of customization. Let's get working. Oh man, these smell so good. I know it's just like the seasoning, but it smells so good. I added a little bit of actually movie theater popcorn butter to them just to kind of extra coat them because of course there's never enough butter. <laughs> But the butter just was a little like sparse on them and I really want the seasoning to kind of like stick and I want them to fry pretty well. So I added some of that, not a ton, just a little bit, but these smell so good. I might just try one after the first batch to see like, do I feel like it's seasoned enough? Am I missing anything? So we'll see, but it smells so good. Here's what the layer looks like that I'm doing. So I only used honestly, maybe like a cup of these so far. So it's gonna take maybe five times. I have to recheck how long it says and what temp, but yeah, this is what a layer is gonna look like. First batch done and they are delicious. I might add a little bit more seasoning, but they are so good. The best Halloween special of the year. This is the night. Na, 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 na. Will's like, what night? You like this one? Are you the dog Garfield? Are you Odie? Will's Odie. Will's Odie. Mike is too like, Mature and All right, guys, I'm fully in costume right now. It is like 610 and we are officially at 14 trick-or-treaters. So we had one at 530 and then it was like dead silent, but I mean, it was still like pretty light out and like it's just at sunset right now. There's actually a really pretty sunset over to like the West, but we just picked up suddenly. Suddenly we had like 13 more in the last like five minutes. But Ryan <laughs> left his phone at work. So that's why he is not in the background with me right now because he is driving back to work. Luckily, he's only like a couple cities over. It's not that far. It's like maybe 15 minutes, but that's a bummer. I'm really shocked he didn't notice that earlier. Usually he's like glued to his phone, but obviously he hasn't been. We also have the dogs in the basement because they are barking at every single kid that shows up. So that's the state of Halloween right now. And let me give you a better look at my costume. I was gonna have Ryan do an up down on me, but clearly that is not gonna be very possible. So again, I'm a campy counselor. So all my blood I added like bedazzles to, to make it campy, kind of. Even on the shirt today, I added bedazzles, or 
I keep calling it bedazzles, like sequins. And then I just have some regular shorts on. But yeah, that's my campy counselor. Let me put in some pictures actually, cause that might show you better, but Ryan took some pictures of me in my costume in the backyard, kind of making more of like a scene out of it. But the pressure's on as soon as like all the kids show up. It's just like, it goes from nothing to like a billion kids at once. But we got through Garfield. I keep trying to snap these kind of as we go. I don't want to be like too far ahead. So I'm trying to have like 10 ready to go for kids when they show up. But kids haven't been like putting them on or anything. Maybe they will later, but they haven't been putting them on. They've just been putting them in their like trick or treat bag. So I'm going to go snap more of these. Trick or treating time is in full effect right now. All right, everyone. It is 7.04 hourly check-in and we are now at 52 ryan has returned he did get his phone i got my phone from work i also <laughs> took off my work clothes because i was getting hot yeah he took off the sweater because he was hot so that's crazy we always like it seems like it's going slow at first i mean this has only happened two years obviously but it like seems like it's going slow at first and you're like oh my gosh we're not gonna get rid of all of our candy and then suddenly at like 6 30 it's just like you gotta go so we're at 52 and it is seven now we're watching Hocus Pocus 2 yes. and we're making dinner. We don't really make anything special. Maybe like some year when it's like a holiday I'm or a Friday, sorry. we'll make something like spooky shaped <laughs> yeah. or something. But we kind of just like, since there's constantly a door to be checked, we just like make something fast. So we're having mac and cheese with like sausage in it. But everyone's oh, been super so nice. They're some so cute. some moms have complimented my costume. Except the only weird thing was literally the last group. There were like four teenagers, little hooligans. And they rang the doorbell. They were probably some high school age. And I answered and they all just were in like hoodies and sweatpants and had like paper, just cheap masks that they probably just like cut off the back of a so cereal cute. box. And so I opened the door and all four of them just stood in like a half circle around me. None of them had treat bags and they didn't say trick or treat or anything. And they just stared silently. And so I held a treat bag out and they were just staring. And I was like, anyone? Anyone? And then they just started laughing and they're like, ha ha. Like, I think they were trying to be serious and it was like a, a joke they were doing. I don't know, but for me, it was very weird. I was like, please don't come into my house. <laughs> Have Those scoundrels! On Halloween. No, that's when you. That's They're when you. Kids. That's when you mess with people's Halloween. So I'm not mad about it. Teenage it was. It was just really weird. I was like, all these like teenage. Fuck. All these little kids have been coming by, and then that happened. So I was like, okay, but yeah, uh, but whatever. So we're at 52. We'll see if we actually get to 100. Yeah. It is now 8:32. So it's been another hour and a half since the last update, and we are at 77. And it has been slow for a long time. We've had one probably in the past half hour. I think at eight o'clock, we're probably at 76. I think. I think we're reaching the end, which some of my blood spots are falling bad. off. So I think it's very fitting that my, my body's reacting to the end of Halloween. It's falling apart as the <laughs> night is ending. The bus ain't running. So we've just been, we just finished Hocus Pocus 2. And now so we're, good. Now we're just watching some YouTube and catching up on things. Yeah. And Mike is crying. Yeah. <laughs> William but, is, as always, in bed. He's asleep. It seems the night is coming to an end, and it's so sad. I but, wish it wasn't so... I think we would have had so many more if it wasn't so cold this year. It snowed earlier today. It was raining off and on all day. I think if the weather was nicer, the people would have been out of droves, mm -hmm. which I don't think is like... I think this was day. still a really respectable yeah. amount of people, though. It was 37 degrees all night, though. Yeah. So I think, like... And it's not raining... It's like, not raining or snowing right now. And I was saying to Ryan, like, this is what Halloween felt like when I was a kid trick-or-treating. Like, yep. I feel like 30s, maybe up to 40. That's kind of what I picture in Minnesota as a Halloween trick-or-treating night. So, like, it wasn't too bad. And I think, like, the turnout for having it have snowed for quite a few hours like, today far, was far, good. Yeah. I was nervous that we were going to have, like, 35 tops. Like We also live, like... I saw a lot of Facebook posts of people being school and a lot of the families in our neighborhood have like kids under 10. A lot of so Facebook posts, be... people were like, what can we do besides going out and trick or treating? So Put like, a coat on. I was getting nervous. Seems like it's coming to an end. This might be the last little update, the last clip. I hope you guys have enjoyed. It's been, a good night, though. It's been fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed 
the final Vlogoween episode and actually experiencing Halloween with us last yeah. year. I think Vlogoween ended right before our wedding, so it only went to like the yep. 27th, but this year we were actually able to make it through. So I hope all of you had a fantastic Halloween. All the ghouls and the ghosties had a fantastic Halloween, and I'll definitely be back for Vlogoween next year after Absolutely. all of the haunt hunting and such. Coming up probably soon, like I said, I do want to do some clearance shopping. So we might have like kind of a bonus haunt hunt this year for clearance. But otherwise, I hope you had a fantastic Halloween and happy November 1st. On Go the, vote. Make sure you vote. Absolutely. <laughs> and on to Turkey Day. Woo! Woo! Yeah, turkey! Turkey! Happy belated Halloween, everyone. <laughs>